Bungie's Destiny franchise has a lot of moving parts. Amidst the ongoing story-driven campaign, extended and elaborated upon in each of Destiny's many expansions, there are a number of different ways for players to occupy their time between big content drops. There's the Crucible, Destiny's primary player versus player mode, itself home to a number of different game types. Trials of Osiris, or Trials of the Nine, right at the launch of Destiny 2, a competitive experience for more advanced PvP enthusiasts. There are strikes, shorter player versus environment sequences of intermediate difficulty, raids, Destiny's premiere, often hours long endgame challenges, and amidst all that, if you're looking for something a little more relaxed, you can jaunt through one of Destiny's patrols and explore through Destiny's massive environments free of any specific objective. But today I want to talk about the game mode most recently added to Destiny, a combination player versus player, player versus environment game mode called Gambit. I've never been very into competitive shooters, even back in the days of the Bungie-developed Halos. I've just not ever been super good at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with other human players. I dabbled in the Crucible back in Original Flavor Destiny, but never caught the PvP bug. I've never played Overwatch or Fortnite, and the last time I touched multiplayer in a Call of Duty or Battlefield was in the mid-2000s. So when Bungie announced they were adding a player versus player, player versus environment mode to Destiny 2, I was all for it. Now let me set the stage for you. It's 2018, Destiny is nearing its fourth anniversary, and Destiny 2, its first. But things have been off to a rocky start for the follow-up to Bungie's star system spanning cosmic adventure. Everything is different, and folks aren't super happy about it. But all that is about to change with the launch of Destiny 2 Forsaken. The PR push for Forsaken is kicking into high gear, and with it comes the announcement of Gambit. At Gamescom 2018, it was announced that there would be a 24-hour preview weekend from September 1st to September 2nd, 2018, where players could experience the new game mode firsthand before it formally arrived later that month. I was excited. So what is Gambit, in a nutshell? Well, you've got two teams of four in two arenas. Enemies will spawn in those arenas and will drop a collectible item called a moat when killed. Players collect these moats and deposit them in a bank at the center of the arena. Once a team collects 100 moats, a boss will spawn. First team to kill the boss wins. So that's the game mode from 30,000 feet. There's more nuance to the gameplay that I'll get into in a bit, but for now, that's all you need to know. This was a game mode I knew I could excel in. In reports from numerous strikes and raids, I was always one of the top ad clearers, so Gambit seemed like the perfect competitive experience for me. And so, for the next few seasons of Destiny content, I all but totally ignored the Crucible in favor of spending my time playing this hybrid PvP-PvE mode instead. It was more fun, more challenging, and offered some of the most outrageous rewards in the whole game. Rewards which are all but defunct now, but we'll get into that in a bit. I loved Gambit, and I was good at it. I loved the gameplay, I loved the lore, I loved the aesthetics. I was all in. Now at the launch of Destiny 2 Forsaken, Gambit was a best of three game mode, with teams jockeying for dominance over a series of rounds, the slaying of the big boss, or primeval as it was called in game, marking the end of each bout. In March of 2019, a new version of Gambit was added to Destiny called Gambit Prime. Prime made some big changes to the game mode, namely condensing the whole experience down to one winner-take-all round. Now, in a pre-Gambit This Week at Bungie post from August 18th, 2018, creative lead Robbie Stevens described Gambit as a game where players would always have, quote, a role to play. But this vision of Gambit wasn't truly fulfilled until the introduction of Gambit Prime. Prime introduced specialized armor sets, with perks unique to each role players could fill in a Gambit arena. You could choose to be a sentry, defending your team's bank and repelling invaders, a collector, tasked with collecting as many moats as possible and sending oversized blockers to the enemy side, an invader, the most self-explanatory role of the four, or a reaper, slaying enemies as fast as possible while the rest of your team picks up your scraps. Gambit Prime quickly became my favorite of the two flavors of Gambit because I knew what I was good at. I wasn't great at PvP, so I never, unless specifically required to by a quest, worried about invading the other team's arena. But I was good at repelling invaders, uh, so good that I got uh, this Gambit jersey for my trouble. 
And when I'd roll up into a Gambit Arena in all century armor, no one ever got mad at me for just sitting on the bank and sniping enemies from a distance. But with the launch of Destiny 2 Beyond Light in the fall of 2020, Destiny condensed the two Gambit game modes back into one, creating a blend of the two experiences. The single round battle from Gambit Prime became the default, but all the specific role perks and armor sets were removed from the table, essentially converting the team hierarchy back to how it was in fall of 2018. So how is Gambit now? Well, I still like it, but I think it definitely could be improved. I completed almost all the ranks last season and completed the Gambit Ornament quest for that season's Ritual Grenade Launcher, so I've had a fair amount of time to reacquaint myself with Gambit and form some new thoughts about it, as well as refine some old thoughts. Now back when Gambit was available in two forms, I'd often see myself loading into a game with another player of the same role, or games where no players had any defined role, at least as their armor sets went. It wasn't uncommon to enter a game with two Reapers, or two Collectors, or three Invaders. However, I think Gambit works best when all four players are locked into defined roles. I experienced this only a handful of times back when Gambit Prime was still available, on the rare occasion I was randomly matchmade with folks who were wearing one of the other three Prime armor sets. But I think there is a way to make this kind of selection deliberate, and there's already a game that does it. World of Warcraft. When you queue into a dungeon in WoW, the first thing you'll do is pick which role you'd like to play, with one slot available for tank, one for healer, and two for damage classes. This does a couple of things for the dungeon experience, it makes sure each party is properly equipped for the task they're about to undertake, and it establishes strict expectations for what everyone will be doing during the dungeon. I have absolutely no idea how simple or arduous implementing something like that into the Gambit loading screen would be, but I think it would make the Gambit experience better for everyone, and perhaps provide some opportunities for new ways to earn Gambit rewards. Now it may be that Bungie had already considered something like that, and not being able to look at player data from Gambit, I don't even know if a high enough percentage of players ever played enough of one prime role or another to even support a matchmaking selection like this. It's very possible Bungie's looked at the numbers and could tell me, hey, Jake, if we did that, no one would ever get into another round of Gambit again because literally no one ever played Sentry. This could easily be the case. According to Braytech.org, the triumph you needed to complete to get the jersey I'm wearing right now was only ever completed by 6.67% of players. So maybe this matchmaking idea is just no good. There's also a couple of Forsaken Era Gambit maps that have been out of rotation for a while that I'd love to see come back, but that's, that's not a super big issue. All in all, I still really like Gambit, and I hope it gets a bit more love in future seasons of Destiny. The Drifter has been highlighted in a number of previous season story arcs, so it's high time he should get a little more love, and perhaps revisit Gambit while he's at it. Hey everybody, this is uh, Jake Terrio with Subpixel. Um, Will says I can't come back to the studio unless you like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment, he even says he'll give me a warm uh, blanket. So uh, please do that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video.